Abba Father in heaven, we are not uh, ashamed to call you our Father. Just the same way Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call us brethren. For it is only the atoning blood of thy Son that can make us righteous before you. Lord, we long to be whiter than snow. But can a leopard change his spot? No. Can a person who is accustomed to do evil do any good? If there is no breaking of the heart of stone and being given the heart of flesh by Jesus Christ himself, then, Lord, we can try even outer reformations. But at the end of the day, we shall be found naked when we are put on the judgment scales. And so we pray that the only righteousness that can be accepted in heaven may be accorded unto us. And Lord, you have not called us unto disobedience, but obedience. And so help us, Lord, with the faith that you have given unto us to exercise the powers that you have given unto us, even more so the willpower to do that which is right. And so we are pleading for thy presence as even we continue learning in these sessions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And so I believe that uh, we are continuing to be blessed. Our minds are being jogged to the things that uh, we are learning. And I'll going, I'm, I'm just going to go through some scattered uh, quotes here and there and uh, giving some sentiments and what our obligations and all this stuff. In the morning, we looked at uh, the system of tithing and offering, who qualifies for tithe, what it should be used for, and uh, what uh, we have to do with the offerings and all that. And I want to just continue where I left uh, and uh, trying to answer some questions that were raised in the morning. So. There is always danger in uh, running into extremes. And because one branch of work is not working, we, uh, we go to another extreme of uh, trying to do things and establish things that uh, uh, the Bible has not told us to do. And so uh, some of us have been uh, discouraged by the things, how they have been happening. And uh, we have ended up in this uh, issue of withholding our tithes. But uh, we read in uh, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, 518, 519, I was shown that the recording angel makes a faithful record of every offering dedicated to God and put into the treasure, and also of the final result of the means that's bestowed. The eye of God takes cognizance of every farthing devoted to his cause and of the willingness or reluctance of the giver. The motive in giving is also done what? Chronicle. So it's not just about coming with your tithe and offering, but what kind of motive are you coming with? Those self-sacrificing consecrated ones who render back to God the things that are his, as requires of them will be rewarded according to their works. Now, look at the screen. Even what? Even though the means thus consecrated be done what? And so that it does not accomplish the object which the donor had in, the glory of God and the salvation of souls, those who made the sacrifice in sincerity of soul with an eye single to the glory of God will not lose their word. Yeah, so people take this quote and say that we can just place money wherever we can place it. It doesn't matter how it is used, is it? And it's okay. But is that what the prophet is saying? These are the things that we want to explore. Tithes and offering must not be withheld by givers if, even if they are not in harmony with what the conference does. And then she qualifies the statement by saying, you have been withholding your means from the cause of God. Read the book of Malachi and see what is spoken there in regard to tithes and offering. Cannot you see, cannot you see that it is not based under any circumstances to withhold your tithe and offering 
because you are not in harmony with everything your brethren do. The tithes and offering are not the property of any man, but are to be used in doing a certain work for God. Unworthy ministers may receive some of the means thus raised, but they are anyone because of this withhold from the treasury and brave the curse of God. I dare not. I pay my tithes gladly and freely, saying as David did, or did David, of thine own have we given thee. A selfish withholding. Do you see now that statement? A what? Selfish withholding from God will tend to poverty in our own souls. Act your part, my brethren and sisters. God loves you and he stands at the helm. If the conference business is not managed according to the order of the Lord, that is, uh, that is the sin of erring ones. The Lord will not hold you responsible for it. If you do what you can to correct the evil, but do not commit sin yourself by withholding from God his own property. Cursed be he that does the work of Lord negligently. And so you ask, should we continue giving the conference tithes and offering when we know what they are doing is evil? The brother who asked these questions is not here, Brother Cyprian. I don't know if somebody can bring to his attention we are here. And we are answering this question that he asked. You have been withholding your means from the cause of God. Read the book of Malachi and see what is spoken here in regard to tithe and offering. Can you not you see that it is not based under circumstances to withhold your tithe and offering because you are not in harmony with everything that your brethren do? The tithe and offering are not the property of any man, and we have seen this. And he says, I pay my tithes gladly. That reference we have written down. So I'll go to the next one. And so... And behold, I have given the tithe, the children of Levi, all the tents in Israel for an inheritance. Numbers 18, 21 to 26. For their service with the serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and death. But the Levi shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute. Forever throughout your generation, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. So tithes are used to maintain the levers. And so another dissatisfied brother was concerned how E.G. White was appropriating the tithes. My brother, I wish to say to you, be careful how you move. Because E.G. White was taking off her tithes and the tithes that were appropriated to her to pay for the ministers who are in the field where money was needed, but it was not being sent. My brother, I wish to say to you, be careful how you move. You are not moving wisely. The least you have to speak about the type that has been appropriated to what? The most needy and the most discouraging field in the world, the most sensible you will, sensible you will be. And then she has a special light. It has been presented to me for years that my tithe was to be appropriated by myself to aid the white and <laughs> who neglected and did not receive sufficient properly to support what? What did she have? She had been revealed to by the Lord herself, himself. That uh, some ministers who are doing a better job were being done. So it is not our work to be giving okay. anyone tithes and offer just because we think that we can give. There should be a special life that this is needed. If not, the tithes should go to the conferences and do the work that it should be able to do. When my attention was called to age ministers, white or black, this is a special light she has received. It was my special duty to investigate into their work. Did she just hand over the tithes and offer the, the tithes? She did what? Invest. First of all, the light was given to her. Then the next thing she did, she investigated the matter. And then 
This was to be my special work and I have done this in a number of cases. No man should give what? Notoriety to the fact that in special, is it in every case? In special case, the tithe is used in, it was in a special way. It was not a norm or a custom to do this. In regard to the colored work in the South, that field has been and is still being robbed of the means that should come to the workers in the field. If there had been cases where our sisters have appropriated their tithe to the support of the ministers working for the colored people in the South, let every man, if he is done what? Wise do what? Hold his peace. I have myself appropriated my tithe to the most needy cases brought to my notice. I have been instructed to do this. Who instructed her? God, which I do not desire to do because it is not best. Some cases have been kept before me for years and I have supplied their needs from the tithe. As God has done what? Instructed me to do. And if any person shall say to me, Sister White, will you appropriate my tithe where you know it is most? I shall say, yes, I will. And I have done so. I commend those sisters who have placed their tithe where it, most, it, it is most needed to help to do a work that is being left undone. If this matter is given, what? Publicity, it will create a knowledge which will better be left us. Because people now are getting at this one extreme end that Sister White is supporting her tithe with most needy field. So I'll just do as she does. But she was under the special guidance of God, under special cases. You who are doing that, have you been instructed by God? And so let us try to answer this question. I do not care to give publicity to this work which the Lord has appointed. And if you, do, you are doing it under the guidance of the Lord, there is no way you should go public into it. So I do not care to give publicity to this work which the Lord has appointed me to do and others to do. I send this matter to you so that you shall not make what? Circumstance, that's, that's what? Alter cases. I will not advise that anyone should make a practice of doing what? Hey, are we awake? This is the problem in coming to class after eating. Let us try to read together. I will not advise that anyone should make a practice of gathering up what? Tithe money. But for years there have now and then been persons who have lost confidence in the appropriation of the tithe, who have placed their tithe in my, and say that if I do not take it, they will themselves appropriate it to the families of the most needy ministers they could find. So these people did not take their tithes and see that brother and so and so was needy, okay? They came with it to the prophet, not even an elder, or a pastor. They came with it to the prophet and said, do you have a place where you can appropriate this tithe because what we are seeing is not the right thing? They did not say that now things are not right. I'll hold my tithe in the pocket and say to any brother or sister doing the work. Let us not run into fanatism. The other extreme is bad and the other extreme is bad. Let us get balanced in these things. And then what did she do as a prophet when she was given tithe to appropriate? I have taken what? The money. Given what? A receipt of it and told them how it was appropriated. I write this to you so that you shall keep cool and not become stirred up and give publicity to this matter, lest many more shall follow what? The example. So as long as, as far as she was receiving the tithes to appropriate, did she want others to do that? Did she even want to receive that tithe? No, that is not what she wanted. 
And so what shall we do our, with our tithes? If all the tithes were brought into the storehouse, God's treasure will not be empty. And we are, we are going to see what is a storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house that is surplus of means in the treasury to uh, humbly sustain the work of God in its various branches. So, gospel workers, who is the storehouse? Page 265. The Lord Jesus is never failing. What? The Lord Jesus is a never failing storehouse from which human beings may draw strength and courage. Jesus Christ is the storehouse. We, we have to understand what it means Jesus Christ is the storehouse. Now, Testimonies of the Church, Volume 2, page 665. Satan outgeneraled them. He was more shrill than they, and he managed to get their means into his ranks and thus deprive the cause of God of that which should have been used to sustain in it in extending what? The truth and saving souls for whom Christ died. So when we speak about the storehouse, what is the storehouse? The storehouse is seen as rendering into God's treasury to support the cause of God for the extending of the truth and saving of what? Yes, the storehouse is where truth is being published, being proclaimed. Not any minister who is in the field doing our work. And that is why we say always, for you to send your tithe where there is truth, you must know what is truth for yourself. Did you hear that? What is truth? You must know it so as to know who is preaching the truth. And she says this, 60, 447, paragraph 2, talking about the storehouse and the truth. Those who are truly converted are called to do a work that requires money and consecration. The obligation that binds us to place our names on the church roll holds us responsible to work for God to the uttermost of our ability. We are trying to answer your question, the accountability of the stewards and tithers and offerers. He calls for undivided service for the entire devotion of heart, soul, mind, and strength. Christ has brought us into church capacity that he may engage and engross all our capabilities in devoted service for the salvation of souls. Anything short of this is opposition to the work. There are how many places? Two places in the world where we can deposit our in God's storehouse or in Satan's Satan's side, uh, and all that is not devoted to Christ's service is counted on Satan's side and goes to strengthen his cause. And so we read this other course. As using that true responsibility in what? Stewardship. This is a Christ collection, KC, page 120. Together, the churches must do what? The members must out of and begin to inquire how is the money which we put into the treasury being done what? The Lord desires that a close search be a close search by who? Members. How do the members do a close search? 
are all satisfied with the history of the work for the past 15 years. Where is the evidence of the co-working with God? So, as members, what do you do? Ask questions. Ask financial reports. Seek into the lives of those who are doing the work. A close examination must be done. As is the money being used the same, the right way. Now this is very serious in uh, 2T 552. Together, as there are for those who preach the truth while they are unsanctified in heart and life, so there are what? Who's for those who receive and maintain the unsanctified in the position which they cannot So if you are sending your money to unsanctified minister, there is a war upon you. So this means to me, the fruit of the minister must be known by the one giving the tithes and offering. Is his life showing that? Is his family life straight? Because we saw that uh, an elder must be a person who has good report, is it? A husband of but one who rules his family well and such a good things. And such an elder is worthy of a double portion. And he says that uh, the laborer is worthy uh, his heart. And so elders are to be maintained by type of the church. And the members are to know how is this elder living? Is he a faithful giver of tithes and offering? For how can an elder receive tithes and offering when he cannot return the same? Is he somebody who mistreats the wife? How are his children? How is the report from his family? How is his spiritual life? Is he doing the work of pastoring the church that has been left under his control? The members must arise and ask questions. We have given offerings this much and this much. We are hearing that the money is not in the treasure. Where has it gone? You see that? There is an accountability that is to be there. But uh, we don't want to work like uh, our brethren in the Sunday churches. Where actually, they are accountable to no one. They are in charge of their tithes and offerings. The, all they can do is buy vehicles. All they can do is buy this and that. The members are always poor while the pastor is always rich. And not rich in the gospel work, but rich in the materialistic world. The offerings goes to him, but still the poor and the orphans are not catered for in the church. And so Sister White says, I have myself appropriated, this is under special light, my tithe to the most needy cases, brought to my notice. I have been instructed to do this, and as the money is not done what? With help from the Lord's treasury. So she's not giving back to the conference, but she is appropriating it to the needy cases. It is not a matter that should be commended upon, for it will necessitate my making known these matters, which I do not desire to do, because it is not best. Some cases have been kept before me for years and I have supplied their needs from the time as God has instructed to do. And this is what we read and it's a repetition. And so there, is, there are in some special cases, she says, do not worry lest some means shall go direct to those who are trying to do missionary work in a quiet, effective. All the means is not to be handled by one agency or what? There is much business to be done conscientiously for the cause of God, Spalding and Magan 421. And while she was giving this uh, 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 admonition, 
the Madison School had been built as a self-supporting ministry and it was doing the work of the Lord, but the conference had withheld it is support. And so Brother Sparling and uh, Maga, uh, e. A. Sutherland could not work in any way. They didn't have finances. And should, so she decided there were people who were seeing the need that these two brothers were striving to do the work. And they said, no way. Let us help these brethren because the conference is not willing to help out. And so we may have such a cases, but when we do such a things, we have to have direct revelation from the Lord. Because we may just think that brothers are trying to establish something which is good when actually it is being even established out of selfish ambitions. And so this is not something to go public about. And this is not something just to hurry about doing that. I, I will direct my type directly. I can go down on my knees and pray to the Lord, please help me understand who is in need around the world that I may be able to send my money. Under special guidance, the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord will give you exactly whom. And sometimes people have gone on their knees to pray about these things, and when they come out of their knees, they receive a phone call from a person who is in need and is in the world. I need this and this. <coughs> Several such a things have been reported. And so she says about Brother Spalding and E. S. Sutherland, there are men who can do the work of securing means for the cause, and when these are acting conscientiously and in harmony with the counsels of their fellow laborers in the field which they represent, the hand of restraint is not to be laid upon them. And so the general conference started saying, no sending uh, monies to Spalding and Magan and the Madison School and all that. And Sister White says, no, hold up your breath. This is not something that you should be talking about. And so she says, brethren Sutherland and who? Magan should be done what? encouraged to solicit means for the support of their work. It is the privilege of these brethren to receive gifts from any of our people whom the Lord does what? Impress to help. They should have what? God's means which the which to work. Let us read together. The Madison what? Has been done what? In the past, but now it must do what? If this work had been regarded in the right light and had been given the help it needed, we should long ere this have had a prosperous work at Madison. Our people are to be encouraged to give off their means to this work, which is preparing students in a sensible and creditable way to go forth into the neglected fields to proclaim the soon coming of Christ. Let us read together to those in our conferences who have felt that they had what? To forbid the gathering of means in certain territory, I now say what? What testimony the prophet, wherever you are, withhold your word. The work of God is not to be thus trammeled. God is being faithfully served by this man whom you have been watching and doing what? Criticizing. They fear and honor the Lord. They are laborers together with him. God forbids you to put any ox on the necks of his servants. It is the privilege of those, these workers to accept gifts or loans that they may invest them to help in doing an important work that greatly needs to be done. This wonderful burden of responsibility, which some suppose God has placed upon them with their official position, has never been laid upon them. If men were standing free on the high platform of truth, they will never accept the responsibility to frame rules and regulations that hinder and cramp God's chosen laborers in their work for the training of missionaries. When they learn the lesson that all you are brethren and realize that their fellow workers may know just as well as they have the how to use in the wisest way the talents and capabilities entrusted to them, they will remove the yokes that are now binding their brethren and will give them credit for having love for souls and a desire to labor unselfishly to promote the interest of the cause.
Now, there's a brother who was perplexed. Now he, the conference has held the, uh, the giving and then the, 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 the prophet is saying it is not left unto people to gather tithes and offering. And then he presents his case to the prophet. What shall I do? You ask me what you shall do in view of the fact that so little help is given to that department of the work in which you are doing what? Working. I will say trust it with the there is a way open for you in regard to securing help for the southern field. Appeal what? This is the only course you can pursue under the circumstances. Send no statement of the situation through our religious world papers because it will not be sent direct to the people god's ways are not to be counteracted counterworked by man's way there are those who have means and who will give large and small sums have this money come direct to your district for portion of the vineyard the lord has not specified any regular channel through which means should pass and so she says call for means to come directly to the workers in the southern field. Points of clarification. Institutions that are God's instrument to carry forward his work on the earth must be sustained. Churches must be erected, schools established, and publishing houses furnished with facilities for doing a great work in the publication of the truth to be sent to all parts of the world. These institutions are ordained of God and should be sustained by what? Tithes and liberal offerings. As the work enlarges, means will be needed to carry it forward in all its branches. Those who have been converted to the truth and been made and being made partakers of his grace may become co-workers with Christ by making voluntary sacrifices and free will offerings to him. And so Brother Sutherland and uh, Morgan were doing self-supporting work. The Lord does not set limits about his workers in some lines as men are are warned to set. In their work, Brethren Morgan and Sutherland have been hindered unnecessarily. Means have been withheld from them because in the organization and management of the Madison School, it was not placed under the control of what? And these are some of the challenges we are going to get when we organize and do gospel order. That they are self-supporting institutions that will be there outside there but how do they get their sustenance when they are not under the control of the conference? <laughs> and so they had a direct light from the Lord and the prophet was in their midst. The Lord has instructed me that from the first, the work in Huntsville and Madison should have received adequate help. But instead of this help being rendered promptly, there have been long delay. And in the matter of the Madison school, there has been a standing off from them because they were not under the ownership and control of some what? Conference. Yet, the prophet knew they were doing a great work. The conference knew that these brothers were doing a great work. They had been sent into the field, but still, because they didn't want to put it under the control of the conference, the uh, help was withheld. This is a question that should sometimes be considered. But it is not the Lord's plan that means should be withheld from Madison because they are not bound to the conference. The attitude which some of our brethren have assumed toward this enterprise shows that it is not wise for every working agency to be under the dictation of the conference officers. There are some enterprises under certain conditions that will produce better results if doing what? Standing alone. When my advice was asked in reference to Madison School, I hope you are catching these vital points that are coming out in supporting, self-supporting ministries and individuals who are at work. Councils were sold, letters were written to conference and all this stuff. People did not just start doing things on their own. When my advice was asked in reference to what? I said, remain us. 
There is danger in binding every work agency under the dictation of the conference. The Lord did not design that this should be. The circumstances were such that the burden bearers in the Madison School could not bind up their work with the conference. I knew their situation, and when many of the leading men in our conferences ignored them because they did not place their school under conference dictation, I was shown that they would not be held by making themselves amenable to the conference. They had better remain as led by God, amenable to him to work out his plan. Schools will be established if God is willing in this reorganization. How shall the teachers be paid there? Bible teachers, I mean. How will those schools be erected and supported? So she says this in uh, 3553. I said I'm just sampling materials from bring them together. It will be what? Poor policy to support from the treasure of God those who really ma and injure his work and who are constantly lowering what? The standard of Christianity. And so we read this as there is fearful ghost for those who preach when they are not sanctified. There is a fearful, there is also a, a war upon those who uh, consent to receive and maintain the unsanctified minister to them in the word of doctrine. So she comes to this statement again, which people try to understand so much in 7 T, 176 to 177, some segments scatter. out. God desires to bring men into direct relation with himself, is it? Every man has been made a steward of sacred trust. Each is to discharge his trust according to the direction of the giver, and by each an account of his stewardship must be rendered to God. We are responsible to invest this means how? Ourselves. Do we individually realize our true position that as God's hired servants, we are not to be to bargain away our stewardship? We have an individual what? Accountability before the heavenly universe to administer the trust committed us of what? Of God. So, I'll skip over supporting hovering ministers. I think Brother Daniel is coming up with that topic of hovering ministers. And they shouldn't be supported by that. If the work of a minister is to move from this church to another and there's nothing he's doing. And we are not talking about how Paul worked. Paul planted churches and revisited them, okay? There is no problem with that, a minister revisiting some churches he planted. But a minister who is waiting on Sabbath just to go to church after church and that, that is a hovering minister. Uh, I know Brother Daniel will delve into it deeply, so I'll skip over it. And so ministers are brought into the church. And uh, the conferences have robbed us dearly. They have put us in great slavery. And this is what I was complaining about in the morning. Where bodies of believers are brought out on the truth in new places, we will not recommend the immediate formation of a church. In such a case, let a leader be appointed. This case perhaps best be done by the evangelist when he raises up the church. And let social meetings be continued till such a time as the individual become thoroughly acquainted with each other. And so there's no need of hiring to plant churches. There's a need of uh, giving people a time so that they may come into agreement in their fellowship and then the church must, uh, should be established. And then when the church is established, these problems that arise when the churches are established. In places where the message has been preached and souls have accepted what? 
have accepted it, they are in limited what? Circumstances and can do but little towards securing advantage that will give character to the work. Often this renders it difficult to extend what? The work. As persons become interested in truth, they are told by the ministers of other churches, and these words are echoed by church members. These people have no church and you have no place of worship. You are a small company, poor and unlearned. In a short time, the ministers will go away and then the interest will die down. Then you will give up all these new ideas which you have received. And so they are not encouraged, the house of worship is not put up, and then they are scattered all over. But this is not the greatest problem, there are other problems. When people have gone at a place and done the work and they see a need of the church, the people there are agreeing to have a church and all these things. There is always a problem that occurs. Some men or councils may say, that is just what we wish to do. The conference committee will take your capital or money and will appropriate it for this very object of setting up a church. But the Lord has made us individually his stewards. We each hold a solemn responsibility to invest this means ourselves. A portion it is right to place in the treasury to advance the general interest of the work. But the steward of means will not be guiltless before God unless so far as he's able to do this, he shall use that means as circumstances shall reveal the word necessities. Uh, I have been involved in different evangelistic campaigns uh, before we started this movement. Uh, I, I remember when uh, we went at a place and uh, did a evangelistic campaigns, uh, I gave out materials, they were given out and all that stuff. And uh, the people were ready to join the church. It was after some times and we, we, 30 of them were baptized into the church and a Sabbath school was started. But now, the problem was that um, all the offerings had to go to the general conference or the conference, whatever that is, and then come back to pay the rent. And I asked, what kind of arrangement is that? What if it goes and the conference doesn't come, take, give it back? And then the, the, the global pioneer was uh, put there to do the work of caring for the 30 souls. Now, it's a matter that is saddening that after three months, the church was closed. One, rent was a problem. Now, the rent was only 5,000 shillings. But in that church, we had principals who are giving tithes and offerings. And so I called the elders and asked them, what is this thing I hear, I'm hearing that the church, the Sabbath school has been closed and the global pioneers have, have been sent home. Said that no, no, no rent. I asked him, what do you mean by no rent? And he said that the money has to go up and come back. I told him, my brother, you are joking with me. How do you do such a thing that the money has to go to the conference and then they have to give us rent to pay for the Sabbath school? 5,000 shillings. And I said, such a kind of managing things is not the right. The pioneer is complaining that three of those months he has not got his salary. How does he feed his wife? The wife is on the other side of the world and he's here. I'm asking the brethren, don't you have any kind of wisdom? If you want to send your tithe to the conference, why not slash it in a half? Send the conference half, half pay this guy. And some of the brethren who had come from the Sunday church went back to the Sunday church because the global pioneer has gone, the church is far and the, there's no rent. The, the Sabbath school is closed. Accountability in the people who are giving tithes and offering. And so we don't want to see such a order and organization that actually all monies must pass through the conference. My exercise, by exercising your judgment, by giving where you see there is what? Need in any line of the work, you are putting out your money to the exchangers. If you see in any locality that the truth is gaining what? The problem is not we are reading and we ask questions when they have been answered by the courts. 
And so I'll wait for you. By exercising your judgment, by giving where you see there is need in any line of the work, you are putting out your money to what? To the exchangers. If you see in any locality that the truth is gaining what? And there is no place of doing what? Then do something to meet the necessity. By your own action, encourage others to do what? In building a humble house for the worship of God. Have an interest in the work in all parts of the field. While it is not your own property that you are handling, yet you are made responsible for it is wise investment, for it is use or abuse. God does not lay upon you the burden of asking the conference or any council of men whether you shall use your means as you see fit to advance the work of God in destitute towns and what? Cities and impoverished localities. If the right plan had been followed, so much means would not have been used in some localities and so little in other places where the banner of truth has not been raised. We are not to merge our individuality of judgment into any institution in our world. We are to look to God for wisdom as did Daniel. And so, wherever a company of believers is raised up, a house of worship should be built. Let not the workers leave the place without accomplishing what? This, and we are not talking about evangelistic campaigns of one week and you are hiring people into the world. We are talking about months of working in a locality, trucks being supplied, people being uh, interviewed if they are ready for this, leaders being there, elders and all this stuff. And then when this is accomplished, even if the conference doesn't desire for that to be done, the way GC does it, then the people have to decide. Shall these people continue to be in such a state and go back to the world instead of having a place of worship? The house where God is worshipped should be in accordance with his character and majesty. There are small churches that ever will be small because they place their own interest above the interest of God's cause, while they have large, convenient houses for themselves and are constantly improving their premises. They are content to have a most unsuitable place for the worship of God, where to uh, where to have a most unsuitable place for the worship of God, where His holy presence to dwell. And so, uh, neglected places of worship should be cared for. Uh, I want to come to an end so that uh, I may give time. And then she encouraged this. There are some cases, however, in which a young church may not be able at once to bear the whole burden of erecting house of what? Worship. In these cases, let the brethren in other churches do what? And I may just say, let other conferences help in the conferences where people are poor. In some cases, it may be better to hire some money than not to be. If a man has money and after giving what he can, will make what? A loan, either without interest or at a low rate, it will be right to use the money until the indebtedness can be lifted. But I repeat, if possible, a church building should be dedicated free of debt. In localities where believers are few, let two or three churches unite in erecting a humble building for a church school. Let all share the word. The expense. It is a high time for Sabbath keepers to separate their children from worldly associations. So we see that uh, churches will be uniting to build church schools if possible. And so, maybe one point. Uh, this quote, every convert to the truth should be instructed in regard to the Lord's requirement for tithes and offering. As churches are raised up, this work must be taken hold of decidedly and carried forward in the spirit of Christ. All that men enjoy, they receive from the Lord's great farm and is pleased to have his heritage and enjoy his goods. But all who stand under the... Sorry for that.
Um, was saying, but all who stand under the bloodstained ban of Prince Emmanuel are to acknowledge their dependence upon God and their accountability to him by returning to the treasure a certain portion of his own. There is a statement I'm looking for. Those teachers in the church, we are talking about accountability on the part of the those who are bringing tithes and offering, is it? Those teachers in the church who are, who the church or in the school, who distinguish themselves by their zeal in what? Politics should be relieved of their work and responsibilities without, for the Lord will not cooperate with them. The tithe should not be used to pay anyone for speakifying on political. Every teacher, minister, or leader in our ranks who is stirred with a desire to ventilate his opinions on political questions should be converted by a belief in the truth or give a this work. 90% of the pastors today in GC should be sent home. How do you send them home? Send your tithe to where people are not politically speechifying. For you will not write a letter to GC and say that my pastor is politically speechifying. Please take his credentials down. They love politics. And I know there are some among us who love politics. All funds not through one. The matter, has, matter was laid before me, which I was trying to present before the word. There is altogether too much responsibility imparted to a few men in where general conference, and these men need the word transforming power of the Holy Spirit as they will lead God's heritage into false paths. The conferences are watching every move made at the end of the world. The different conferences have been led to look to the leading men at Battle Creek, feeling that no important move can be made without their approval. This tendency has been growing strong until it's a serious hindrance to the advancement of the work. And what? The arrangement that all the arrangement that all monies must go through the general conference and under the control of the few men in that place is a wrong way of managing. There are altogether too many weight responsibilities given to a few men and some do not make God their counsel. What do these men know of the necessities of the work in foreign countries? How can they know how to decide the question which come to them asking for information? It will require three months. That is then when people use Telegram for those in foreign countries to receive a response to their questions, even there was no delay in writing. And so this condition of things have been created in our conferences and churches under religious cloak which existed in the world. Confederacies have been formed to make their showing stand out as superior and they have gained the name of having done a large work in the responsible positions of trust. This is a, a this is the last thing I'm reading. This quote is the last thing I'm reading. Let us read together. This condition of things has been created in our conferences and churches under a religious which existed in the world. Confederacies have been formed to make their showing stand out as superior. And they have gained the name of having done a large work in their responsible position of trust. They flatter themselves that they were doing God's work when they were establishing principles of what? They were depriving their brethren of their rights in gathering everything in the book line under their control and making their own laws and rules. Rules that were not after God's order at all, but which revealed the very attributes of Satan. And so, we have the accountability. We have in special cases where actually God asks the members of the church to act upon the matters which are before them. And so I hope uh, that gives us a foundation, not an exhaustive information. And so we have now another chance of reading what is true and being able to act upon it.
So on the other extreme, there should be no withholding your tithe and offering. On the other extreme, you are not to actually start your own plans of giving who you want tithes and offer. Conferences have to manage these tithes. There are special cases where you will have to appropriate these things. But it should not be made a custom that yours is to send so and so your tithe and offer. Such a cases, they are not revealed in inspiration. And so I want us to pray. And uh, as I always say, let us sleep less and read more. If reorganization will be done, it will not be done by sleepy people. It will be done by a people who are fully awake to what should be done. You don't want to start a haphazard work. You have to start a work that you know that God is directing. And that is why we need to gather all the information we have. And not only gather the information. If there is a time that prayers was needed, it is this time. Everyone has to pray for a discerning spirit from the Lord. Just to know what to do and when to do it. For men are deceivers and they are, will appear so good in your sight. But at the end of the day, and so I tell you, try us, try other people what they are doing. Where is the financial records of the money that you are giving out? And even if you have the financial records, does the financial records reflect what you are saying? If you have given out 100,000, and you are given a financial report that it was spent on building this and this. Does, is that building worthy that money? And not only is that building worthy that, was it wise to build such a building? There is a place where people have got enough, a lot of money and instead of doing the right thing, now they enter into building magnificent things instead of building what is wanted and sustaining another field to do what is wanted. And so accountability just goes beyond asking for financial record, but even canceling out the people. What you want to do is this and this. Is it worth it? If you want to do this, why not do this here and do this there? It goes beyond just asking for financial records. We should be more than wiser in asking financial records because you can give me 100 shillings and I tell you this is what I have done with it. Yes, it is good you have done that, but is it worth the cost to do that? And so may the Lord be with us. Shall we pray? We can't get tired, our Heavenly Father, of coming into thy presence to ask of thy guidance and of the Holy Spirit. We want just to know what to do and at what time to do it and when to do it, where to do it, Lord. And so help us, Lord, not to run into extremes and fanaticism. Give us a spirit of the disciples and the pioneers of this work. Lord, awake us from our slumber that uh, we may come to know our responsibilities, not as ministers, but as members of the churches. And Lord, we know that uh, where the people are crying for you for divine help, we will not withhold it if it is in the right course. We are really requesting that Lord, as brethren from different localities, you may show us the way and give us the strength to walk in it. Thank you so much for giving us this peace that we are experiencing when others do not have peace. And thank you for gathering us here when others are so sick and they can't be gathered in this place. Help us to use this moment, not for idleness, but Lord, to seek your presence with honestness and sincerity of the heart. Your name be blessed in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, I ask this. Amen. Thank you.